welcome to the 2020 Public Land Elk Hustle. This is our day-by-day -day style elk series videos to bring you along our journey as we try to crush public land elk hunting with general and over-the-counter elk tags. We love and cherish public lands. We know that you do too. We wanna honor them and we wanna showcase all the adventure that awaits you by just going out your back door. Come along with our journey, bring your friends. We can't wait to show you all our adventures. Let's go. Guys, good morning, good afternoon. It's actually afternoon, good afternoon. Tomorrow's opening day. So we're trying to kind of go day by day series because that's what Tim said to do. So I'm trying. My camera guy's here. He's camped about 30 minutes away. We're gonna connect tonight, do a little bit of scouting and maybe move his camp here. Uh, I like where I'm at. There's just not that many people, but holy smokes, I went back up this canyon today and there was like nine trucks, razors, four wheelers, all glassy in a very small area, in my opinion. And I was like, okay, this is where not to go. But I did go hike in, not just glass, and I found a really cool watering spot up high, so I might put my dad on there for high water. I wanna tell you a funny story because I think it's worth hearing. So there's a dirt bike trail and it's designated dirt bike. And my motor use vehicle map says that it's open till like September 7th, uh, which is a weird day. I, I, you only can go off what you read. But anyways, I, I never been up this dirt bike trail and I wanted to ride it to see how nasty it is. It's nasty. There's boulders and rocks everywhere. I filmed quite a bit of it coming down. I just didn't give up. Like there was a couple spots where I think some people would just give up and I just kept the uh, puttering up. And anyways, I made it back as the crow flies only four miles. Man, did it turn elky quick. I started getting into these high meadows with water and wallows and dark timber and open uh, sage on across the way. And, I'm like, man, this would be a place to set a spike camp. And then I see this guy waving at me and I wish I had a camera to film him or whatever, but our interaction was priceless. He's like waving at me and so I shut my bike off and he's about 30 yards away in the timber and he's like sputtering about something, not supposed to have a dirt bike back here. So I immediately turn my bike off and I just say, yeah, you can have a dirt bike back here. And he's whispering to me and I thought it was weird that he was whispering and he's got a bow in his hand and his face is painted up and tomorrow's the opener and he's like hey hey there's elk oh right just right there be quiet and I was like elk I said what does that matter why do you why do you have a bow in your hand and he's like uh it's opening day and I said sir no it's not and he's like well, what's, what, what day is it? I said, it's uh, August 29th, sir. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But what day is it? I said, it's Saturday. He's like, no, Idaho opens the last Saturday of the month every year. And I said, okay, bro, I'm gonna keep riding. You're gonna get yourself a motor use vehicle map, review that, and then get the regulations in Idaho and review that uh, there's no hunting allowed until tomorrow. And he was like, oh. And then he disappeared. And I mean, like, he got the heck out of there. It was hilarious. So I didn't see him when I rode back out, but the dude had was hunting. It was probably 11 a.m. He'd been hunting since opening morning, or his opening morning for probably five, six hours. And he was in on the elk. Guys from Kentucky, there's some good elk hunters out there. Just read your regs and it changes year to year. So anyways, game plan tonight is I got a couple more spots to check out and then debate where to go first tomorrow trail camera wise man i got a trail camera that's hot and it's got a lot of bulls on it and so i'm probably gonna hunt those elk tomorrow that's what we're gonna do guys 
I'm an idiot. And I'm gonna explain to you, day before the opener, I'm moving camp. My dad called, he wants to get an RV hookup to take showers. So I gotta go 45 minutes into town. Jake the cameraman found a, a place where we gotta pay 10 bucks a night. RV hookup, fine. Showers, I guess they're uh, a thing. <sighs> I gotta tell you this, this is like, this is like Newton's law, man. This is like worst case scenario. So you see how my trailer's backed up towards camp? I'm not done quite loading. Well, my four wheeler was in there and I didn't have it uh, ratcheted down. So when I backed the ramp down, four wheeler went and it busted this ramp open and went out and ran over my bow. So first it broke this bolt, knocked this right off. So I had to MacGyver and put a couple bolts in. Luckily I have tools, brought a lot of tools. So we fixed that and I was loading everything and then I looked over and said, whoa, my bow's on the ground, that's weird. And I, I come over and I see that my engage grip here, get you a better light. This is broken. And then I look over and my sight is snapped off. So, what do you do? You take out your backup bow, this is the 2019 Vertex, and I took just the housing off and put the house, this, this housing on, you can see where the rattle can paint stops, and I just put the housing on. This is a ProSight four pin, and fortunately for me, I'm shooting the exact same arrow as my last year bow. And so my sight tape matches up, um, I had to move the elevation up a little bit, got my 20, walked back 30, walked back 40, walked back 50, bullseye, 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 bullseye. So I haven't shot past 50, I'm going to do that before I leave, just to make sure that this slider matches, but I think we're in business, and then if I need a backup bow, I'll have to take that sight off, put it back on that, and it will be good to go. This is why you bring a backup bow, uh, otherwise I'd be out of the game starting tomorrow, and I still have to load camp and then meet up with everybody, but man, shit happens when you party with elk. So uh, just super fortunate to have a backup bow. First, second, third axis, it's all matched up the same as last year. So whew, dodged a bullet. running over my bow with uh, my four-wheeler accidentally and fixing all that and fixing the tailgate. I met up with Jake, he's filming. His tag opens on uh, September 5th, so I got him behind the camera for a few days. Uh, we got a game plan for tomorrow, but we're checking out a backup spot tonight. I rode in um, a single track dirt bike trail, pretty nasty, pretty gnarly, I filmed that. Um, we're gonna find a little bit of a better way to get in and I found a, like a little magic saddle I want to go check out. So we're probably going to spend the rest of the evening here and then make a game plan for tomorrow morning. Come with us. All right, so I just want to like, let you guys in on how I'm thinking. So we just found a spot where the road ends and there's no motorized vehicles. And it goes from like 89 to 95 and it's just straight up and then it's open big long stretch and then there's a saddle that connects this drainage going to into can't say this drainage heading heading basically east and then there's a saddle and that water heads west okay so two separate water systems uh no motorized vehicles it's six o'clock we got an hour and a half of good light and the shade's starting to form. That's where I'm gonna be looking for elk, obviously, but instead of going straight up the trail, we went up a little, and now we got on contour. So we're at, uh, we're just right at 9,000 feet, and we'll stay at 9,000 feet, we'll skip 400 vertical, and we'll tie back into the ridge, and we're on the north side, so we'll be able to see elk sign, like that fresh rub, and this is where the elk would bed, right in here. So we should be able to pull up some elk tonight, maybe hear a bugle, and we're also trying to scope out some high country water where we can set a spike camp. Um, this is my plan B. We have plan A for tomorrow, this is my plan B. Just kind of let you into the mind of a madman, so. Look at that, is that a screen? Oh yeah. Jake, look at that wallow.
Alright guys, so first night scouting, um, Dan just spotted three bulls, um, setting up his phone scope obviously, you can see, get you guys some footage. It's like a 5x5 five five and just like a 4x5 five or something. We've heard two bugles by the way, back on that ca canyon, kind of digging the saddle because it got a fork drainage, a main drainage, a main drainage, and then you got timber pockets and it's, you gotta walk in, so. Um, where's that third bull? Uh, we got about 35 minutes, 40, daylight left. Just enough time to sneak over, glass this base on the way out. How many bulls, three? Four bulls, because of that crazy rag by himself. And then, while Jake was standing here glass and three cows came running right by him. I'm not gonna say he didn't notice, but he might not have noticed. Um, and then we heard two bugles over here. So, uh, good spot, walk-in only, our style. Uh, game plan tomorrow is to make a play at this uh, elk herd that I've been watching. Got good trail cam footage, coming off the pivot. And then, I mean, that's a short deal. They don't come our way, they don't come our way, and we'll probably put our heads together and get our spike camp probably come in here so that's the plan we're gonna get a get back to camp get a good night's sleep charge cell phones charge cameras get packs ready get bows and bow cases and let's rock and roll Dan broke his bow, yeah. and not this bow. No doubt. So, at all my elk shape camps, I preach bring a backup bow when you hunt out of state. And this was the first time where I actually had to bust out my backup bow. Now, didn't do the greatest job showing what happened because I didn't film my four wheeler. I'm an idiot and didn't have the ratchet completely strapped down. And I backed up to my camp because I was moving my camp. My dad had made it. Jake the cameraman had made it and they had found a place where they could hook up for water 30 miles away and they were wanting to stay there where they could take showers. And I wasn't really impressed with the area that I had scouted. So I packed all my camp up and then in doing that, got in a hurry, which I'm always in a hurry, asked him, <laughs> always in a hurry. I uh, backed up my trailer to the camp, my four wheeler came rolling out, broke the gate as you guys saw and then it went perfectly right over my bow and it snapped my Montana black gold sight in half. So what I did on video, but we didn't capture on video, let me kind of break that down. So I busted out the verdicts. I took the, the housing um, and put it on my 28 VXR. And I shot that and I hunted with that for a few days as you guys are going to see, but I didn't film and I didn't explain that I actually, my 28 started shooting kind of funky. I started getting some weird arrow flight after the crash, we'll call it the crash. And so what I ended up doing is taking that sight back off and putting it on my Vertex and hunting with my Vertex the rest of the year. If you're wondering why is he using a two year old bow, it's because that's my backup bow and I'm an idiot, but a uh, pretty fun day. I wish I could have captured the interaction with the guy from Kentucky, <laughs> literally just mobbing on a single track trail, motor use vehicle map, gives the green light, dude comes running out of the woods, all camoed up and like, hey, you're not allowed to have your dirt bike here. And then he's like, whispering but he's kind of like yelling whispering which is the best and i was like bro this dirt bike trails open till the seventh and what are you hunting and he was like there's elk right there and i was like yeah i think i said it in the video but yeah he truly was hunting a day early in the backcountry i've never seen somebody just disappear so fast <laughs> like once he kind of realized i was right he just kind of i don't know gone so nice guy um but just a really good scouting day. Uh, Jake and I were able to connect, get our new camp set up, and we were able to find a really sneaky way to get into a basin that actually had kind of a saddle where we had a basin on each side, and we were able to give you guys some pretty good footage of bulls still summering, basically, bull bachelor groups, and we were just so stoked because the next day was opening day. Next day was the opener, man. 
And you could see how excited you were in that video. Oh my gosh, I'm like a kid at Christmas, honestly. Yeah, so props to you for having a backup bow. You had a Vertex backing up your VXR. This is neither of those bows. And by the time this video drops, they can see this thing. Yeah, this is- Tell them about giving like the 15 second sales pitch. Yeah, so first thing people ask me is why didn't I have a, a 31 and a half VXR as my backup bow? And at the time I had that bow set up for mule deer. Mm. And I had a, basically a two pin slider from Spot Hog. And I don't like two pins for elk. I like multiple pins because a bull comes into 15, you pull back, you don't get the shot, all of a sudden he runs and he's 55 yards out and you don't got a pin for that, you can't. So anyways, long story short, I like multiple pins for elk. That's why I brought the Vertex. Uh, this is the V3 from Matthews. They have a couple options on axle to axle. They've made some improvements. This bow, I shoot shorter bows from Matthews really well. So I shot the 28 better than the 31 and a half. This bow is 27 and I like a smaller bow for elk hunting, because you're always lugging tons of stuff on your back, it's compact, you're going through brush and stuff. I do like a longer axle axle for forgiveness and accuracy, but for me, elk hunting, I like a shorter, this is gonna be a great elk hunting bow. Yeah, man, we got this bow build video done, so we're gonna link that video below if you haven't seen it yet. Dan's main man, JJ, the, the archery guru, sets it up and breaks it down and kind of get this first impression. You guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe to the channel because we're gonna be dropping these things out every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, rolling forward. And submit your questions below in the comments because we're gonna peel Dan's brain back. He's gonna run through and answer elk hunting questions from his days in the field. There's more elk on the other side of that pivot already. So there's that big group that's going north. Yeah. On the other side of that pivot. Like there's a brown patch, that neck pivot over. Oh, is that another huge group? Yeah, both of them have bows. So is that hunting? hunting.